So hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to build this awesome LIGO generator. Um, we'll be measuring the voltages. Um, you can see a magnet spins inside of there. Um, via this crank, there's a gearbox in here and diode bridge, uh, bridge rectifier. And um, then we got a capacitor here. Um, so it's going to turn it out into DC. Um, and like I said, we'll measure the voltages today. And um, I'll show you exactly how to build this step by step. So, let's quickly go over the supplies. So, of course, we're going to need a whole lot of LIGO here. Um, so, hopefully you have a bunch of different size variations and everything. And we'll probably want some alligator clips. A pretty big capacitor here. This one fit fills up this whole place. It's a pretty big capacitor. Um, and then, we're going to need lots of magnet wire. So, you could probably buy this or rip it out of a transformer. And, of course, we're going to need some magnets. Um, which are found right down in here. So, if you're going to want to make this thing more efficient, you're going to want a gearbox. So if you get a bunch of big and small gears, then I'll show you how I configured this gearbox in a moment. Okay, so I went ahead and I drilled a hole right through the center here. So you uh, can see that th that's where um, our rod's going to go for the magnet to be suspended in the middle of these coils. I went ahead and wound the coils I probably used about the entire roll of magnet wire, so you're going to need a lot. You could either find that magnet wire out of um, an old motor or something, or you could go to Radio Shack and buy it or something. Um, but yeah, and make sure you leave, leave some lead wire out so that we can attach it up to some other stuff later. So um... Okay, so perfect. Now we have this box here. So this is built out of Lego. We'll be winding our coils around here, and the magnet will be in the center. We're going to need to drill a hole through the side about right here, so we'll go back and do that. And then, So, then you're going to put the magnet in and put a piece of um, Lego across here to seal it into your container. And um, right now you could, there's a bit of the um, rod there. If you turn that just manually right here, you would generate a bit of electricity, but not very much. So we're going to go ahead and build a gearbox. So as you can see here, this is my present gearbox. I just took the lid off over here show you kind of what's on inside. So first you're going to want to start with a big gear along with your hand crank here. So um, when you turn this, the last one is actually going to spin nine times faster um, than what you're spinning here. So this thing can make the magnet go really fast generating lots of current. So um, big gear goes on to a small gear, okay? So this small gear is going to spin really fast. On that same line, you have to attach a big gear, and then small gear. I didn't have another big yellow gear, so it's a bit bigger blue gear. Um, on the same line, and finally to a smaller red gear. And this is going to make it spin nine times faster than here. I did the calculations. Um, so anyhow, I'll stick the cover back on, um, and go to the next step. So, now as you can see, I stuck the lid back on. We got our generator all hooked up, our hand crank final thing is to take the output leads and attach them into a diode bridge. Now a diode bridge is very simple to build. Um, here, I'll bring you one of my extra ones that I built over here to kind of show you how this works. So, if you look at this, we have some diodes, okay? You're going to attach one of the wires here and one of the wires here from your AC current power supply, okay? Now if you look at where the little black line is facing, they're all facing in that direction, that way. Um, so, uh, the way this works is um, diodes only let power flow one way, which is this way. So, um, when it's positive here and negative here, it flows in such a way that the output leads, um, which are here and here, are going to become, po one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative, and they're always going to be like that. So this little bridge rectifier um, will do just that. So, we build one and we hook it right up to our generator here. Um, so it's soldered on here and here, and here's the output leads. Got it hooked up to alligator clips, which run over to a capacitor. Now this capacitor is going to stabilize the voltage so that you're not going to get blinking diodes or whatever if you hook them up. Um, because right now you're only getting half of the sine wave. This capacitor will actually store energy and slowly release it. So um, then I, after running through the capacitor, it comes out to alligator clips, which you can hook onto anything you want. So here, I'll give you a quick test. So here, we'll just do a voltage test with the AC voltage. So I have it hooked up before it goes through the bridge rectifier over to my voltmeter here. So I'll we'll turn it on to uh, AC setting. And um, 
So we're gonna measure the maximum voltage. So every time the voltage goes higher, it's gonna record a new voltage. So if we click this, then this. Now our peak voltage is gonna measure. So, um, I guess I'm just gonna put the camera kind of here. I guess. Um, stick it here. I'll show you after. So if we crank it really fast. You can see about the maximum voltage that we got was about nine and a half volts. It's almost ten volts. Um, so that's cranking it pretty fast. Um, so you could hold a steady six volts just cranking it like probably about like this. Not too fast to be able to hold a steady six volts, and that's plenty to charge, say, a cell phone or something when you convert it to DC. So I'm here. I'll show you the measurements after we convert it to DC. So. You can see I got it hooked up to the output leads for um, our generator. So this is after going through the diode bridge and through the capacitor. So you're going to notice the voltmeter. It's going to rise and then it's going to slowly drop because the capacitor is slowly going to drain. So, um, okay, let's see. I'll rest it on my lap here so you can kind of maybe watch the voltage. Let's see. Um, I guess you could kind of maybe see that. Yeah, okay. So perfect. So if you watch it... So you saw it go up around 7 volts, that's because of the um, diodes actually you do use some energy to convert it to DC. And our capacitor is slowly discharging, so you can see the voltage slowly dropping. So um, if we go ahead, take our leads over here, and if we are able to actually touch them together, then you can see we shorted it out and it goes back down to practically nothing. Um, so yeah, uh, let's just test it out with some LEDs and stuff and see what this so here, I have my generator hooked up to this 3x3 grid of LEDs here. Um, I actually, if you look way over in the corner of my room there, I have little electrical outlets stationed all over and they're all up in parallel so that if the power goes out, I'll actually be able to plug in my generator and light up my room. Um, so anyhow, if we come back over, I'll just let the camera rest here and you can see these glow. So and then, even after I stop, the capacitor stores so much energy that um, these uh, little LEDs will actually glow for quite a while longer. Oops, you can see they're really faint now. Yeah, they're practically off now. If this was just one LED, it would glow for 30 seconds probably. Anyhow, so this is a pretty awesome generator in my opinion. It's really cheap to make, it's easy, and um, it's loads of fun. So um, go see what you can do with it. Have fun.